，歡迎各位出席。Welcome to today's media briefing. Today we have Secretary for Food and Health Professor Sophie Chen and Secretary for Home Affairs Mr. Casper Choi. The Secretary will give their opening remarks and then they will take your questions. Let's have a go. Thank you. Yesterday, the 23rd of January, the government made a restriction testing declaration and a compulsory testing notice on the restricted area in Jordan, and we asked the people there in to take a test before midnight yesterday. And the government would like to thank the cooperation of the people in the restricted area. Uh, they have gone to testing stations to take tests in an orderly manner. And also, we would like to thank our colleagues from different departments, and we would like to thank the hard work and support of the contractors, as they have assisted our citizens in taking the test. And I would also like to thank the citizens for their support and understanding with your cooperation and endeavor, and with the addition of the overnight hard work of the contractors, all the test results of the residents have been sent to the relevant residents via text, text messages. And yesterday, we have visited over 300 households. And in the course of doing that, some didn't answer the door. Among these households, well, some of them live in units that are in buildings that have not been evacuated yet on reclamation streets. Um, some may be confirmed cases, and some of the households may already be under quarantine, and some of the units are vacant, so that's why there are no people inside. The government doesn't have detailed information concerning this, yet we will try our best to uh, follow up on this units. We will carry out measures and to investigate those units that have not responded. Other than the confirmed cases, all the people tested have um, been found that their test results were negative. The, under the declaration, the, um, the compulsory testing um, ended at midnight on the 24th of January. And after yesterday's home visits and testing, we still deploy a lot of people in the restricted area today, and we appeal to people who have not tested, to have to have not go to um, to testing to do that the test as soon as possible. And 70 people have um, done their test today, and we have um, given consideration to the present situation. That most of the people have taken their test. So um, after 6 p.m., that is now today, we allow those who have taken their test and um, as, as long as the results are negative. And for those who are wearing risk bands, um, these kind of residents can go in and out of the restricted area via designated access. We want to minimize um, the impact on them. We hope that they can act really as soon as possible. Our goal is that by the midnight of uh, the 25th of January, um, we can revoke the declaration so that the affected residents can resume their normal life by 6 a.m. tomorrow. The government will seriously follow up and enhance the law, and our colleagues would continue to work in the restricted area. Now, for those who have been in the restricted area for over two hours in the past 14 days, even though they were not in the restricted area when the declaration was in force, they should still um, comply with the compulsory testing notice, and they should take a test as soon as possible. Taking the test is a responsible behavior. It's for um, themselves or their families and for the community. And for those who violate the restriction and testing declaration, um, he is um, they are committing an offense and is subject to a fine of $25,000 and imprisonment of six months. I got Professor Chan. Good afternoon, friends of the media and members of the public. And for the uh, imposing the test restriction testing declaration and compulsory testing declaration for the Jordan restricted area as of today, 3 p.m., 
and the 7,000 residents in the restricted area had already been tested, most of which have been tested at 51 mobile testing stations. And over 80 individuals have been tested by door to door. Of the seven, over 7,000 tests conducted, 13 samples have tested positive to the virus at 0.17% of positive rate. Four cases come from the same family, and the two others from another family, and the seven cases came from different households. And the preliminary positive cases have already been sent to hospital authority facilities for isolation. And about 20 close contacts will be sent to quarantine centers. Contact tracing is still underway. And the individuals in the restricted area, if they have any medical inquiries, when we commence the operation, we have arranged a hospital authority dedicated doctors and dedicated nurse from the Department of Health to answer their inquiries through hotline and provide assistance, including some uh, claiming discomfort or some would claim they need to attend doctor appointments. These doctors and nurses try to provide assistance. And yesterday and today, they have handled a total of 18 uh, calls for assistance. Just when we issued the restriction testing declaration, uh, after, that after completing the testing and the testing results have already been ascertained, then the operation shall be completed. As the testing operation have been progressing very well, just now, Secretary has announced that we will uh, allow those who have already been tested negative to leave their premises early and also able to leave the area. And we are also on track to lift this restoration and testing declaration as scheduled. We now open to 40 questions, and each reporter can ask three questions. Speak, speak, move the microphone, and state the media you represent. On your third row, the lady in white overall. Oh, you've got 13 cases um, out of 7,000 people tested. Um, what do you think of the positive rate? Is it higher or lower than what you expected? And my second question is, um, many people are wondering whether this mini lockdown in Jordan is a preparatory exercise for lockdowns of larger scale or even a citywide lockdown in future. Can you share with us your thoughts? Sorry, may I know you're on uh, from, uh, RT Wendy from RTHK, thank you. Okay, so uh, first of all, about the uh, positive uh, cases or the confirmed cases. Uh, so far, we have identified out of the um, 7,000 odds um, testing that uh, there is uh, 13 uh, confirmed cases. And uh, the uh, positive rate is 0.17%. Uh, In fact, if you look at the positive uh, percentage, uh, if we look at our testing strategy, the Hong Kong government testing strategy, that is the compulsory testing, uh, the uh, target group testing, plus the voluntary testing. So the overall uh, positive rate is also about 0.17%. Uh, so it is um, uh, similar. Of course, in a, a small uh, area that we have identified uh, throughout the two days that we have, uh, or one and a half day, identified these cases, uh, we are, we will be uh, analyzing, you know, the cases um, uh, in a more detailed fashion. Uh, but I think the compulsory testing and also the uh, testing within uh, a area uh, with the uh, restriction of movement uh, is effective to identify these cases and also to very quickly, as soon as possible, uh, detect as well as uh, isolate these cases. And also the close contact uh, will also be quarantined. So I think this is an effect effective method uh, uh, in, in this particular situation. Uh, obviously, we will be uh, reviewing uh, the situation 
uh, in the uh, in uh, in the cases that uh, CHP have uh, identified, and if there are, uh, if there is such a need, uh, obviously we do not rule out uh, any future uh, any future operations like this. But uh, we also we would also like to say that uh, currently our uh, the issuance of the compulsory testing notice is also an effective method uh, in identifying the cases. Uh, as as you may um, recall, that we have uh, lower our threshold of uh, of a compulsory testing issuing a compulsory testing notice, as well as identifying uh, a core area uh, for um, for testing, for compulsory testing as well. So I think, you know, we will review the cases, we will uh, look at the uh, criteria and also the consideration, including uh, public health considerations, the number of confirmed cases, uh, plus the uh, environmental factors. That is, um, so uh, in this particular situation, uh, the buildings are old, there are a lot of subdivided flats and so on. Uh, plus uh, the uh, supplementary information of the sewage study, as well as looking at our current capacity. So all these are uh, considering factors. Next please, the lady there. I'm from OutHK. I would like to ask Professor Chen, this time around the percentage is 0 0.17, that is the positive percentage. Um, are you satisfied with this uh, percentage? Is it different from your expectation? And now you have only found 13 confirmed cases. Do you think it's a waste of money and resources and manpower? And you have knocked on the um, doors of different households. Oh, how many households have not answered the door? And this morning you have only found 100 persons. So uh, for those who didn't answer the door, for those who have left the area, do you think you can um, find them? Uh, within such a short period of time, we have conducted tests for more than 7,000 people, and we have identified 13 cases, and the percentage is 0 0.17. And for the 0 0.17%, It is quite similar um, to uh, what we have uh, found um, in our schemes. Now, for those who are willing to take tests, we have um, given them tests. Um, those, and we have a number of measures for people to take their tests. We also uh, provide tests for people who um, have to take tests. So the percent. The positive uh, percentage is also 0 0.17 um, from all those tests. So for this time of testing, actually earlier on um, in Yaomaje, we have designated uh, some areas, for example, the core area. We already started compulsory testing then, and we have identified some cases. That's why we thought that the risk was quite high, and we needed to take such an action. That is, for this area, we need to find out all the positive cases. We don't think it's a waste of resources and manpower. We think this is something that we should do. Mr. Choi? Well, for follow-up actions and law enforcement actions, we have done them before. Afterwards, we will continue to work in the area, and we will try to um, find out whether those households that have not answered our um, knocks will um, can be found. And we have found about 470 households that have not um, answered. And some people have moved away, and also uh, the mobility in this area is quite high. It's not like a public housing estate. We have a lot of records. Uh, for pu public housing estates, uh, we have post notices on those households who have not responded. Uh, maybe people um, are hiding inside. So if they open the door, those notices will be torn. Then we would know. So we would adopt a multi-pronged approach. We will continue to uh, track these cases. When we look at the um, area, 
we think that um, some of the units are already uh, vacant. So um, like other buildings that are subjected to compulsory testing, we will seriously follow up. Well, we don't know who are living in those uh, flats. Well, when we look at the census, it's about 2.8. So if nobody lives inside, then it's considered vacant, and it will be zero. Well, we have looked at the census. The old figure is that uh, there are about 8,000 people living in the area. Well, some people may have already moved out, and some might be under quarantine already. So um, for now we have tested more than 7,000 people, so the figure is more or less right. Next question, please. I'm from Now TV. Well, for um, the arrangements for people living and entering um, the restricted area, where is the exit exactly? So they are allowed to go out of the restricted area freely. So if they leave the area and, and when they come back, are there special arrangements? And for the Yamate fruit market, um, we have seen over 70 cases. So what will you do about it? So would you also uh, designate the fruit market as a restricted area and ask the hawkers to undergo compulsory testing? Well, I do not have a map with me now, but on the ground, our staff would explain clearly to the residents. Now, after 6 p.m., we will allow those who have taken the test and the, um, the test results are negative and those wearing wristbands. That is, for residents of this kind, they can be allowed to leave the area. Of course, um, that will be registered. That is their entrance and leaving the area. And for the restriction declaration, actually it would expire at midnight tonight. It will only be lifted by midnight tonight. However, we allow our residents to do this because we would like to thank them for their cooperation. And for the confirmed patients, they have already been taken away from the restricted area. So in the area, we have our colleagues on the ground to inform the people there. Later on, I'll give you a more detailed information. Professor Chen, now we have taken this action. And outside Yamate, we understand that there are also confirmed cases. And the CHP will continue to monitor very closely. That would include the fruit market you mentioned and other places. Then we will make a decision as to uh, which type of compulsory testing is most appropriate. Well, for people in those areas, I hope that they will take a test if um, compulsory testing is imposed. Next question. I'm from HK01. Well, for the uh, residents in the um, restricted area, um, we are told that um, they have received food supplies, but they have to cook those food. And some people are living units without um, cooking facilities. And some elderly people have been waiting for hot food supply for um, many hours. And many people complain that um, nobody answers the hotline. So why is this happening? And what will the government do about this? Well, a lot of residents have left the restricted area before the lockdown. So have you tracked down those residents? Will they be held liable? I think. Hi. Secretary Trey, on the arrangements, the district office and on the ground, we have received a, 
uh, in, uh, inquiries and that they're able to locate the staff for assistance quickly when they get to the street. And before the commencing operation, we work with the social welfare department to identify the elderly residents. Where do we need to send hot food? That have been arranged. When we receive call for assistance, not just the telephone hotline, or when we undergo testing, when they arrive at the testing stations, we can provide them with different kind of food stuff. Some will be uh, instant noodles that would not require can opener or bread or chocolate. In the process, we notice. Uh, for any uh, wrinkles identified, we'll review later so that we can do a better job in the future. I would like to thank the public for the support and understanding in the past two days. And a lot of the vital services are quickly provided and in place. And yesterday, we noticed that there's uh, some uh, animals in shops and worry that they need to be fed. We quickly arranged our disciplinary officers to help to address this situation. The, uh, we will also conduct uh, or tracking down the individuals. This is a civic responsibility for themselves and for others. I hope that they can comply with the compulsory testing requirement. Let me repeat. Anyone in breach of the restriction and testing declaration will be is an offense and will be fined twenty five thousand dollars and six months imprisonment. Next question on the fourth row, the lady in white jacket. TV news. A question for Secretary Choi. Does that mean that if those managed to wear a wristband and just show their negative testing results, that they can? Uh, leave in all four corners of the specified areas or the specified checkpoints. So, uh, th does that mean that they can leave the area as they wish? And for those in the restricted area, would you consider uh, a second testing? And for those who may be in incubation period, that how you make such arrangements, Secretary Trey? In this testing operation, and yesterday we stressed it. Hope that we can take a snapshot and to test everyone in the area, and we achieve this objective in an orderly fashion. In the past, well, we may not. Well, we conduct a uh, compulsory testing operation, for example, in the case of Jet Ming Chun. And on that day, I would like to thank the public health for it as well. The compliance rate was over 90%. If you still recall, we also had a sewage surveillance with the drainage service department. They are the different methods which will follow instead of. Uh, we're drawing the staff after testing. We hope that the buildings will not uh, have any silent carriers remain. This quite is very cunning. The incubation period is quite long. A lot of the individuals might have tested three days ago and today. The previous case is that it was still have not have onset at the first testing. When we found many viruses in the three samples, that we are concerned about silent carriers in the building. Therefore, we issued another compulsory testing notice. And also, by this way, we managed to find some other cases by through second testing. We'll continue to follow in this area by different methods, and for example, the sewage and the environment, and also the cases to point to any likelihood outbreak. We'll deploy different ways to help the to eliminate all risk in the area. And so whether there will be future tests, we'll continue to follow up to ascertain any risk left in the building. If we're warranted, we will 
commence the corresponding arrangements. I do not have the map with me. There will be a specified checkpoint to allow the public. Well, simply put, after they've been tested and they also been provided with negative result and wear a wristband, then we will register them. Well, so to uh, facilitate an orderly entry and exit, and the restricted area decoration will also be lifted by today midnight. Last question. This lady in black. I'm from Ming Pao. So for the restricted area, well, how many doors have you knocked on? You said that 470 units didn't uh, respond. So what's the percentage? And for the confirmed cases, um, in which buildings are they? Well, people may have been to the restricted area or they may live in the restricted area, but they have taken tests in other areas. Do you have the relevant figures? Experts say that a um, second compulsory testing would have to be carried out. So would you do that? And how about the uh, fruits market? 16 blocks have seen confirmed cases. So would that be um, designated as a restricted area as well? You have many questions. So uh, when will we take actions? Mr. Choi? Yesterday, we visited 3,650 3, homes, and we will use different methods to follow up on these units. We will try to um, look at data and um, do the relevant follow-up work. Professor Chen, this morning, we announced that we have done 6,900 tests. The HAD and the disciplinary forces knocked on uh, many more doors again this morning, and now we have done over 7,000 tests. As for the second testing, we know that there is an incubation period. The CHP will be reviewing and analyzing this dozen cases, and they will be looking at their close contacts. So we will try to find out whether there is a need for a second testing. We do not um, exclude this probability, this possibility, but we need the analysis from the CHP first. We've just got the data. So after the analysis, we will we'll, um, look into it. As for your third question, we will not be just looking at this area. If you look at Yao Qimong, there are other areas. Um, which are seeing an increasing number of confirmed cases. If you have noticed, in Yao Qimong, we have been um, issuing compulsory testing notices, and some um, buildings are subjected to compulsory testing. So if we find uh, more cases in um, any other areas of buildings, we will definitely follow up. I'm sorry, the speaker is off mic. Yes, I will answer this question again. We have checked all the residents. As long as they are tested negative and they have a wristband, that means they have been tested and they are safe, then they can leave the restricted area. Well, but 
some people may have been hiding and now they suddenly show up. So we will definitely check the wristband and we need to have the negative test results. So um, if we find such cases, we will definitely follow up and we will enforce the law. Thank you. I'll give you the relevant information later because I do not have the map right now.